Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John's Reports for the 10th of April. Good Friday for everyone. So obviously no market action of relevance other than the European session, which was uh, slightly positive. Uh, we're looking at the, um, well, let's see which program. I think this is the Opus T, uh, just the regular strategy, uh, Opus uh, 1 program. Uh, the T I have on the 50K chart. But it, like the ATR bust, combination which is usually hunting for a bottom in large ATR moves and I think we could agree this has been a large ATR move I mean look at that ATR 149 that's down here at the very bottom of the chart that little yellow 149 and that wasn't even the peak the peak over here um, let's see if it'll show up on the screen was no not quite I have to lift it up a little bit to let everybody see what that is it was well it says 227 was the peak ATR. I mean, that's that's insane. Uh, but what I thought I'd do is show you the uh, adaptation of what I've done with the uh, Power Mode 2 uh, combo. And easy way to show that real quick is the format. Uh, I turned on the Sigma, which basically are these large events that you're seeing at like the end of day, like we're getting right here, uh, that's popping up. And if I remove this and make it a zero, which is the default, um, it will display it in its natural form. And when you see it in its natural form, you can see that it so shrinks the distortion because it's not range bound, meaning, it, you know, like normal oscillators will have a 100 or a minus 100. No, this will do um, to infinity based on the projection of how much force is uh, applied to the situation. So you're reading a negative 113 and a plus 70. Well, that just shrinks this too much. So what I've done is by allowing you to flip this to a one, it reduces it to 45, 45 on the top side and on the bottom side. And that then opens up the um, indicator. But what it does do for you is it does print the number uh, down below um, the uh, zero line so that you can see what it really was. Uh, for those that are going to you know, follow that. It's not critical, but what the point of it being is, is that under certain circumstances, you're seeing that when you get that red one, it's saying, hey, you've got a negative draw condition going on at that particular point, and usually you get uh, the move. Now, that's going to depend to on whether or not your Azure is rising or falling. So from that standpoint, what I did was I included, you'll see that it turns white on down pivots and it will turn green on an up pivot uh, if it's uh, significant enough. And actually, I'm going to add a, uh, input for that as well. Uh, I put down uh, three quarter of a point tick move because you'll get moves that are to the base. Like, so if you look at the bottom there, you see directional is at 166. Then it goes to 178. Well, I, yes, it's a pivot, but it's not significant enough to warrant, uh, not to mention you're so far away with magenta crossing. And then so by the time it gets to a minus six, that's actually a pivot. Yeah. And that's where um, it's going to print the start of that one from the green. And that turns out to be um, GAM in this particular case, but a weak one too, because it's no D DOC steel reset uh, within that configuration. But when we look at the daily, uh, it's going to make a huge difference on our daily uh, Opus uh, trade setups, because as you can clearly see here, where it's buying the full hawk, it should not be buying the full hawk. I mean, you have a pivot lower with the cross of the magenta. I mean, that's clearly a short. And in fact, it was. Um, so it's going to make some huge uh, alterations into how we perceive things. And even within this short, you didn't get a short cover until literally right here uh, at that 2460 point uh, well, from where that original signaling was, which um, started way back over here, you know, the 33 plus, which we had from the other daily charts that we normally follow. So you can see how significant that is. And of course, then there's the little plays in between. So even within the short, you're getting a secondary signal um, that comes through. And these little moves, this is always an interesting one that I'm seeing, uh, that you get the little spike, you finally get the cross, and then unfortunately immediately it triggers back the other direction. And that's going to happen. There's no way to do it, particularly within large uh, short moves. There's always a uh, short cover rally. Uh, shorts are notorious for wanting to get out quickly because the upside is theoretically unlimited and your downside is limited. Um, not quite the same in the futures market because of the exponential nature of it, but uh, still significant. But you can see from the original cross right here, um, from that point, we've been in a straight 
move up with uh, magenta not threatening anything. Of course, now that you've reached the meeting point, uh, without um, magenta traveling further down, um, you're going to get a separation, which is going to put some drawdown pressure. Now, that's an interesting spot, given that we're right at the 50% uh, from the 100 uh, on this dip. So that's something to bear in mind going forward. So, But it makes it easy, because again, we just look and say, okay, there's the 50% at 2780. Yeah, i got to pivot around range, particularly as it pertains to my... Um, intraday charts and being able to make adjustments from there and so when we look at this from a broader standpoint it's crazy because you're kind of at uh, highs that we saw what back in um, end of last year so so the question then becomes I mean are we doing as well now as we were then begs the question but when you have free money from the Fed we always have a saying here don't fight the Fed because it's unlimited train of cash and they just keep adding zeros no matter how upside down and they're providing floors so it's not that they're just like driving price up that's not the goal the goal is when price dips to a certain point there's an unlimited buyer there and that causes people then to bid up above it and so it does in effect uh, escalate the market the problem is, is that usually later in the days they tend to pull uh, out from it and that's when you start to see some uh, additional selling starts to show up because this is gonna allow a lot of people to get out and uh, or be free at a reasonably high before the economic numbers of will really zero GDP uh, you're gonna have some I mean there are certain industries that are still open and doing things trying to facilitate it but the vast majority of small business and things like that have been wiped out so it'll be interesting to see how uh, the numbers start to play out because I think it's going to be ugly and uh, you can put as much shine on it as you want but if you're not planning to start anything for another six to eight weeks can you imagine we've already been in Italy for almost a month and a half and you're talking about you guys having to go at least that long or longer you're way out in time before this is finished and still they're not using any of the therapies that obviously we've talked about um, on our Skype chat and that which is interesting because uh, anything that would allow you to have a certain portion of the workforce return and protect your uh, at-risk populations is the easiest way but that doesn't seem to be in the thought process at this particular time. NQ obviously is above 50%, even easier. And still pretty clean from its uh, readings, a little softness going into uh, the Good Friday here, but that's a little less important than the fact you have the red DSC cross above uh, uh, the negative 7.5 into a new zone. So that's going to give it strength. You still have rising uh, gold on shakeout that's now positive. So that becomes a real easy one because as long as shakeout can remain positive, you're expecting upside draw um, until we see lower histograms. Would it even be considered uh, something negative? And again, right at our critical line, the central banks jump in to save the euro because absolutely what is happening, uh, they're just passing more spending, uh, well, borrowing really is, borrowing and spending is all they're doing, borrowing and spending, and it's, working out just fine for them. Um, and nobody's expecting the hyperinflation because uh, you have no pressure on commodities like oil and some of those other things. And with farmers throwing away food by the tons, um, it's an interesting one. You know, you have a starving world and you're just throwing away millions of tons of food simply because, what, you don't want to take it somewhere. Um, you know, they're interesting. You know, you're seeing the car lines that are hundreds and hundreds long for people waiting in uh, the new food lines uh, in their cars, uh, which is interesting in and of itself, uh, the change in historic dynamic, but it's nonetheless the same thing. And so it's just shocking uh, the inefficiencies of allocating resources like that that uh, certainly would be of help. But we don't control it, but what we do know is gold is going to continue its escalation. No stopping it whatsoever. Oops, let's get 5K in here. All right, so here's our 5K chart. Uh, there's so much to go over with the 5K, but um, I think it's going to be good when you start to see the little green pivots um, for the beginnings of the upturns and then just a matter of that crossover. 
Um, some of these uh, that happen, though, uh, it's always good to see it because you get that rise and then it comes down, it's looking good, and then you start to get your down pivot while you're still in the middle of it. So instead of these staying green, they're going to be able to flip back to uh, red move much quicker um, as they start in. And then uh, the progression, boom, and then it, uh, now this is an interesting one because this is a slow bottom up tick. And the way it was uh, set up in the programming is that once you dip below, uh, in this case, going down to 0.47. I'm going to look at some of those details when we get below uh, a half point and see how uh, violent the reversal is because that may be a way to solve it. But because the uptick is so slow before it gets to the full amount, uh, it passes uh, the number of bars that uh, I had allocated for before it will recognize a green uptick. Uh, so I may work with that one some more and uh, look for special circumstances that take place. But it uh, becomes excellent when you're using it in conjunction, though, with the DOC. Um, in this particular case, you see your orange, and then you get your confirmation. And you see they're matching uh, within a bar. And so I, I like that kind of synergy. Uh, it just gives you added bonus. And then when you're in that trend of, you know, continue rising despite the up and downs that you're going to get from uh, DLC readings. You don't have to be like, you know, every little tick of the DLC, you can follow the, the broader parameter of the um, Power Mode 2. So I just think that's helpful uh, from a broader sense. We want to scroll back through uh, early parts of the day. Uh, it was just a early decline that started going and then boom, they just stepped in and bicycle came and it just took off. And literally, um, every time we had the little tiny dip, and you can always tell the short ones that are going to be more successful than not. When you get your immediate uh, cross right away upon the pivot, those usually tend to do better. When you have the big separation of the magenta and it starts as pivot, those tend to be your short trap ones because by the time it gives you a trigger, you're at the bottom of it and then it just triggers back for the long. And so I think that's something you can watch for. It's not, I'm not saying that you, it's not worth taking it. It's just it gives you a better idea of knowing which ones are going to have a little bit more uh, impact oomph uh, because the DOC spread is going to look like a DOC spread all the time. Uh, it's not going to vary, but this uh, uh, certainly it's like a DOC spread where you have steel coming from above to below versus below, and it happens uh, from above. So um, it just it should be a little bit more helpful to be able to see that because when you get those powerful moves right at the pivot, they tend to go versus, uh, as we saw later on, when you're in the big uh, up streaks. Sometimes they start and then they just kind of get, wow, back and forth. And that happens. Sometimes the algo gets overplayed and another one jumps in and you're seeing the chaos of that build up right there. And it led to a bump before the dump. And so the big plans were laid. Everyone had their idea. So it started off with the bearish one. Um, bull move came back into it and so that caused for the uptick. It also allows them to fill in a lot. And then when they finally pivoted over, uh, you have the first pivot, but you can see no support for the magenta. That's why I marked that one. The secondary one, clear pivot and perfect cross of magenta. And that one has much more uh, of to it, and that just filled back in all of the move that uh, had previously taken place. So little things like that that are helpful. Um, and I think it's worth it for all of you to go through and you can take a look at uh, uh, how some of these uh, consistent moves manifest themselves with just a simple three-line reading, um, not requiring all of the uh, understanding of the DOCs and intricacies. Plus what I've done is in this particular case when we have these colored candles and you can see these uh, lines right here that will indicate um, previous buy signals and things like that. Um, that's where we're going to examine and pretty much leave the program of the pain bars to do what they typically do, which is following trend off ABM and um, only execute key moves at key areas, your shorts and your powerful longs. And that will really simplify things and make it uh, so that the noise of in between moves isn't as critical for us, which just makes things easier. As always though, I will keep following with updates on our skip chat. 
and any special circumstance I will be sending out this update. Uh, I was actually doing also an alert on it uh, for when the um, magenta crosses. Uh, so you'll be able to turn alert on and then you'll have the different alerts for those that uh, want that feature. Uh, as always, trade well. We'll talk to you later.